always there is give and take. Always there's positive and negative consequences. What is the positive consequence of opening up your aperture farther? More light. Is there a negative consequence? Yes, it's all about depth of field. So let's talk about what depth of field is. Everybody grab your camera for a moment. Before I give you the definition, let's look at depth of field first. Grab your camera, please. I'm going to set, uh, I'm going to give you a subject to put your camera at. Let me set this tripod up here. Everybody grab your camera, please, and point your camera at the tripod as if you're going to take a photograph of it. All right? Actually, let me move it up a little farther here. Right up here. Okay? So point your camera at the tripod as if you're going to take a photograph of it. All right? Don't take a picture of it. Just point it there for now. Adjust your focal length to the standard focal length, which is, again, 35 millimeters, and then adjust your focus. Now, listen as you're looking through the camera. So go ahead and look through the camera. Look through the camera as you're listening. So certainly, the subject of your photograph is the tripod, right? And, and when you focus the lens, you should be focusing on the subject. In fact, whenever you take a photo, the subject should always be in focus because that is what you focus the lens on. But it's important to understand that when you take a photo, the subject is very rarely the only thing in the picture. So as I stand here and as I point my camera at the tripod, I can see a lot of other stuff besides just the tripod. As I look through the lens, I can see the desks that are in the background. I can even see this table here in the foreground. There are things in front of my subject, and there are things behind my subject. When we talk about the objects in front of the subject, so for example, where I'm standing as I'm pointing at the tripod, this desk here in front of me is between me and the subject, so we would refer to it as being in the foreground. As I point at the tripod, the wall back behind the tripod is in the background. All right, so far so good. When you take a photograph, the subject should always be in focus because that is what you focus the lens on, as I mentioned. But in some photos, the other things that are also in the photo may in fact actually not be in focus. They may be blurry. And that is due to something called depth of field. All right. So go ahead and put your camera down and we'll give you the definition of depth of field. Depth of field I'm going to give you a working definition. Again, if you were to look it up in the dictionary, it might say something a little different, but this is a good working definition. If I were to ask you on a test, then use my definition. Since I write the test, you probably want to use my definition. <laughs> Depth of field is the amount of foreground and background that are in focus. So depth of field refers to the amount of foreground and the amount of background that are in focus. There are times, again, you need to repeat that one more time so you can get it. Again, depth of field is the amount of foreground and the amount of background that are in focus. So again, if I have my tripod here, if I went to take a photo, so I go ahead and I point my camera at the tripod and I focus the lens, on the tripod and I go to snap a photo, when I get my photos back, sometimes not only will the tripod be in focus, but maybe the background is too, so the wall and the desk is back there. But at other times, when I look at my photo, the tripod's in focus, but the background is blurry. I've showed you tonight some examples of that. You may or may not have picked up on it. Let me again pull up some examples of these photographs. Ron, would you grab one of those lights for me? All right, so uh, give it a pump up projector a moment, they need to warm up just a little bit.
All right, so this photo that we were looking at before. When we look at this photo, what is the subject of this photograph? Baseball. The baseball is actually the subject of the photograph. How do you know? Because it's what's in focus. Remember, again, I said before, you will always focus on the subject. But there's other stuff in the photo. For example, the picture in the background is also in the photo. But looking at this photo, the baseball is in focus, but the background is what? Blurry. When we talk about depth of field, we talk about depth of field in, in, in two terms. We talk about it as either being shallow or deep. Shallow or deep. Sometimes you'll hear it referred to as a wide depth of field, and inadvertently every once in a while I'll use that term. I don't like using the term wide depth of field, because wide has more to do with field of view, whereas depth of field has to do with the depth of focus. So what I prefer not to use the term wide depth of field, I mean deep or shallow. Shallow depth of field is when the subject is in focus, but the foreground and background are blurry. Like this, like we see here, exactly right. Deep depth of field, on the other hand, is when everything is in focus front to back. So not only is the subject in focus, but so is the background too. Do you have a question, Bill? Can you, can you make that background focus and still make the ball look like it's coming at you? It is possible. That's tricky. We'll talk about how we control depth of field in just a moment. For right now, I want you to get the concept of what it is. And then I'm going to tell you how to manipulate. Yes, Kate? Deep depth of field. Yes, so deep depth of field is when not only is the subject in focus, but so is the background and foreground. Well, yes? You said you want to make it everything or just add the stress? I would specify background and foreground. Yes, question in. Um, would we be most likely using deep, or, yeah, deep depth of field in the crime scene? Yes. So in crime scene photography, we almost always want deep depth of field. Because we don't like things in the background to be blurry and out of focus, because sometimes there are details in the background that are just as important as the subject. For example, let's say we have a dead body on the ground, we have a homicide, and we have a dead body on the ground, we're photographing the body, but maybe there's also blood stains on the wall four or five feet beyond that body. Not only is the body, the subject, important, but the blood stains or potentially the bullet hole or even the murder weapon that's lying six or eight feet away, th those are important details too. If we have a shallow depth of field, what will happen is the body in the photo will look sharp and clear, but the things in the background, those details will now be blurry, in some cases so blurry that we may not be able to see what they are. So in crime scene photography, we generally want deep depth of field. That is opposite, though, from what a lot of artists prefer in their photographs, especially portrait photographers. When you take pictures of people, like if you're taking photos at a wedding, graduation photos, for example, the subject is the person. You're taking up you know, photographs of a, a young man or woman get, as a senior getting ready to graduate from high school. And you're taking pictures of them. They're the subject. They're the reason you're taking the photo. And quite often the background is noise. It's visual noise. It's, it's disruption. It's, it's distraction. When someone looks at a photograph, you don't want them typically looking at the background. You want them focusing on the subject, which is the person. So when you take photos of people, portraits, for example, you want a shallow depth of field. Because what happens is when the background is blurry, the eye is naturally drawn to the area of sharpest focus. Let me show you some examples of what I'm talking about. For example, even here, immediately, where is your eye drawn to in this photo? The baseball. Why? Because it's the thing that is in focus. All right, let me show you some other examples. Oh, this is a great little photo. Again, I didn't take this photo, but it's a cute photo. So here we have this little kitten here walking along this pathway. Is this an example of a deep depth of field or a shallow depth of field? Shallow. shallow. Because certainly the subject, again, remember, always the subject will be in focus. 
That's, by the way, how it's very easy to pick out what the subject is, because it'll be the thing in focus. And, but the background is blurry. So when you look at this photo, do you spend hardly any time looking at the background? No, because actually you don't like to because actually your eyes are trying to focus it and they can't and it gets frustrating and so your brain is like, I'm not looking at that part. I'm only going to look at the part that's in focus. In cinematography they will do this. If you watch movies sometimes, sometimes the cameraman will adjust the focus and, and brings attention to maybe something in the background or then brings it back to the foreground. By blurring certain things, it draws attention to things within the scene. You do that in photography too. This is an example of shallow depth of field. It's a great little photograph. Not a good crime scene photo, but it's a good photograph. Here's another clear example, right? It's obvious to see that the subject here is the monkey because it's the part that's in focus. Does this photo have a shallow or a deep depth of field? Very shallow. You can't, there's a background there, but you have no idea what that is. It could be trees or bushes. Who knows? You can't tell because it is out of focus. By blurring the background, you have got rid of the distraction. If you are careful, if you know what you're doing with depth of field, you can even blur the foreground. This can happen, this is a, I, I, I go to my son's baseball games all the time. And the problem with taking photos at a baseball game as a parent is, you always have to sit behind that metal backstop because they don't want you to get hit with the baseball. They don't let me go out on the field and take photos. I gotta sit behind the, the metal chain link fence. And so the problem is if you don't know what you're doing and you're taking photos of your kid, the chain link fence shows up in your photos. But remember, if you're careful, if you appropriately adjust the lens and the aperture, I can take photos through the fence of my son and the fence will disappear because it is out of focus. If I decrease the depth of field, if I make it shallow, the fence, which is technically between me and him, which means it's technically in the foreground, will disappear. This is helpful also if you go to the zoo and you want to take a picture of that lion that's behind those, you know, behind the bars or behind the glass. If you very carefully control depth of field, it will visually eliminate that barrier that sits between you. I see it all the time with people who don't know what they're doing at the zoo. They go to take photos of the animals, and all they keep getting are photos of the bars, right, or the cage, because the camera doesn't know what it's doing, and the operator in that case also doesn't know what they're doing, and so they're getting these horrible, horrible photos. If you know what you're doing, you can get rid of those foregrounds and backgrounds. One other example. All right. I think this is also a great little photo of depth of field. What's the subject? This cute little dog here. You notice the, the subject because it's nice and sharp and focused. Notice the background is blur. Let me show you a difference between depths of field. Let's look at this photo. Actually, let me pull it up a little differently. Hold on one second. You guys are being so patient. I told you guys I was going to get you guys out of here early, and I, I lied to you, apparently. I'm sorry. All right, let's look at this photo. This photo, and that's mislabeled. This should say narrow depth of field, not short depth. This photo has a very shallow, not even narrow, I even used the wrong term there, shallow depth of field. What is the subject in this photo? It's this headstone right here, right? Now, there's a headstone that's a little closer to the lens, this one here, which is in the foreground. And there are even other headstones in the background, like this one back here. But this is the one that's in focus. So this is the subject. This is an example, again, of a shallow depth of field. The eye is naturally drawn to what's in focus. Beautiful photograph. Not a good crime scene photograph. That's okay. But it's an example of narrow, sorry, not narrow, shallow depth of field. All right. On the other hand, let's look at another photo. Let's look at this photo. This is a deep depth of field. This is labeled as long. It's really deep depth of field. Notice in this photo, everything from front to back is in focus. It's not just this closest headstone. So is that one, so is that one, so is the tree behind. This has a deep depth of field. Okay, so far so good? Yeah.